you rent or own, everyone has real estate questions, and we brought in an expert to give some free advice and answer your questions. Joining me now is real estate attorney Sherry Olafson. Sherry, thanks so much for Good coming this morning. morning. Rick. Real estate's a big thing. You know, it got us partially got us into the big crisis in 2008. In some ways, it's helped us out, and a lot of people wondering, can I get into houses? So we've taken some questions and want to get some answers from you. First question is, my wife and I recently rented a house uh, that's owned by a big institutional landlord. The agent told us that this company's customer service was the best around. Unfortunately, we're finding the exact opposite. We have a roach infestation, and the oven has not worked since we moved in over a month ago. They keep promising to send someone out, but so far have done nothing. What are our options? What a nightmare, right? Yeah. Well, first of all, you want to start by reading your lease and also Google the local landlord-tenant laws because that's your roadmap to your rights, your landlord's obligations, how quickly he needs to respond, and even how how you need to deliver that notice. And Rick, here's the thing. We're getting a lot of complaints from tenants of these big Wall Street institutional landlords. That's the bad news. The good news is they are responding. So you want to write a letter. You want to cite the laws. You want to make sure you deliver the notice the right way. And you will eventually get the response that you want. But you know, these guys went out. They bought a ton of properties. Most of them were foreclosures or distressed homes to begin with. And they're really just getting their feet on the ground in terms of, of really right. getting it and together. And having to figure out how to, to manage that many houses. Exactly. But with any, with any rental, you need to be proactive. You need to inspect that house before you get in and make sure your rights are clear. Good advice. All right, the second question. My bank gave me a mortgage modification in 2009. I just got a notice saying that my payment is going up. Are they allowed to do that? Rick, this is a real problem. 95% of those modifications involved lowering the interest rate. But here's the thing. That was only temporary, and most people don't realize that. So after five years, your interest rate will go up by 1% a year until it reaches whatever the 30-year fixed rate was at the time that you modified. So you want to look up what the 30-year fixed rate was, and you'll know what the maximum amount your payment can go up to. Then you want to calculate what your payment's going to be if the rate increases 1% a year. If it's going to be too much and unaffordable, you may need to refinance or even think about selling. Man, the fine print, you think about these things, I think so many people thought exactly that. And, 40 million people are yeah, in this situation. And there's so much fine print in, in any kind of these household deals. Here's the, sec uh, the third question. I'm trying to decide whether I should renovate my home or sell it and buy an already renovated home. The problem is I'm still underwater. What do you suggest? Yeah, well, and I love that because I love the renovation model. It's a great way to build equity, a wonderful way to sort of have a second job and make some extra income. I'm a strong advocate of that, but you need to go. The National Association of Realtors has some great resources online to see what improvements will give you the best return for your buck. Maybe get a local realtor in there to find out what improvements you should be making. And here's the thing. Anyone who's underwater needs to be careful if they're thinking about selling because the Mortgage Debt Forgiveness Relief Act expired December 31st. That was the temporary act that said you don't have to pay income tax on the amount that the bank forgives. If you short sell now, you will owe income tax on the amount that the bank forgives, which could be worse than staying in staying the home. Staying in the home. Great advice. Good to know. All right, Sherry Olofsson, thank you very much. Sure, thank you. All right, well, coming up, forget about.